Testament reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, it's, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire within a bush. <clears throat> Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And the Gospel reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. When I was in Israel in January of 2010, although all the places we visited were meaningful, there were certain places that to me were different from all the rest. Places where tears just came to my eyes out of nowhere, where my heart would beat a little faster, and I knew that I was on holy ground. Even though I do believe that all ground is holy, but I would experience certain places differently. I can't quite describe it, but when it happens to you, you know it. It can be in visiting one of these pilgrimage sites, or it can be standing and watching the quietness of the colorful leaves falling and swirling around in the wind before they fall to the ground. Or it can be the first snowfall if you're standing, happen to be standing outside, or watching the way the light shines through the trees during a majestic sunset, or it could be standing at the edge of the ocean, or any number of things or places. It's this can't quite describe it experience. Experience that brings us to a place, a place in the presence of the holy. The Celtic people of Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and Northern England have a term for this. They call it thin places. They believe there are certain places for each of us where a person can feel and receive Earth's deeper meanings and blessings. Christians have usually imagined God as dwelling up there in the heavens, but in Celtic Christianity, thin places continue to describe those locations where, where encounters with God become especially noticeable. Now, I do believe that God is present at all times and in all places, so to think that God would be more present in one place than another place 
just doesn't sound quite theologically sound to me. And if we believe God is everywhere, then all ground is holy ground. But I know from personal experience that from time to time, there are certain places, whether it be taking a walk and seeing a cardinal swoop by right in front of you, it brings tears to my eyes. Looking up and seeing a heart-shaped cloud, or being in Israel and touching a rock in the Garden of Gethsemane and just started weeping and it was, I felt like it was such a holy space I couldn't even take a picture. It's not, I don't think that God is more present in one place than another, but perhaps that we are more aware of God's presence in some places. Marcus Borg, in his book, The Heart of Christianity, says that thin places help to open closed hearts. A closed heart is this author's metaphor for the hurting of the human condition that is in need of salvation. Hurting that perhaps is the result of a chaotic childhood, experiencing abuse, living with mental illness, either your own or someone close to you, addiction, financial secure, insecurity, illness, grief, strained family relationships, whatever it is, there is something called this human condition. And the list of hurts goes on. Some hearts become hardened and closed due to the hurting circumstances in life. And people become more capable of violence or of being judgmental, of being insensitive or arrogant, self-centered or greedy. We all have known closed hearts. At times our own, at times others. Marcus Borg writes, and I quote, When I stand in a supermarket checkout line and all the people I see look kind of ugly, I know that my heart is closed, end of quote. For me, I know it's when I can get kind of quickly irritated at someone or I have trouble listening to them. As soon as that happens, I know that my heart is starting to close. A closed heart is a stranger to wonder and awe and gratitude. Another quote from Marcus Borg, even if successful by worldly standards in life, a person with a closed heart often feels self-made, entitled, or if life has been especially difficult, people feel bitter and cheated. End of quote. All of our hearts get closed from time to time, but we have a loving God who operates through these thin places to open our hearts. So today I want us to explore what your thin places might be. Moses, is one of his thin places, came in the form of a burning bush. And it wasn't being consumed. Now I know many of you have heard this story a hundred times in your life. Or more, maybe. But I just want us to remember a couple things about this familiar story. Number one, Moses was in the midst of his daily activities, his normal routine, when God showed him something spectacular. Moses was tending to his father-in-law's flock. It was an ordinary day, like any other. When he saw something peculiar, and he went over to look. That's when we're told when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. When the Lord saw he had gone over to look. Moses had a choice. He could have just kept his 
flock, like what is that odd thing over there? Oh, I don't know. I gotta keep my eye on, on these sheep or goats or whatever they were. Right? And don't we do that? We get these opportunities amidst our ordinary days. We see someone along the road and we get a thought, maybe that person needs help. But we keep going. Or we take lunch outside on a nice day, an especially nice day, and we're sitting in the sun, but we never look up or really look around. We're just busy eating our lunch. Or we receive a phone call inviting us to something, but we decline because it doesn't really fit in our schedule. Sometimes we allow ourselves to walk around in a daze and we miss the burning bushes in our lives. We miss the thin places that God makes available because we don't go over to look. Our thin place could very well be in the midst, well, normally is in the midst of our ordinary life. And if you're a traveler, and that's part of your ordinariness is traveling, you know, it might be these world pilgrimage sites, or, or they might be in your own backyard. Perhaps it's sitting on the beach, watching and listening to the ocean. Or maybe for some of you, it's on a mountaintop. Music and poetry and literature can become thin places where we can experience the holy. The point is, we need to be open to experiencing these places, these holy times. A thin place can come in the form of even a difficult experience. How many people's hearts have been opened by encounters with serious illness? or with suffering, or with grief. When we're so vulnerable, they too can be, can open up the holy to us. Today is a special day. Today we remember those loved ones who have gone on before us to a place of no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more tears. And although we're still here in this part of our eternal life, and we still experience pain and suffering and sorrow and tears, we, may we also embrace the joy and the peace and the comfort that's available to us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ, the one who promises us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' day, the people who personally encountered Jesus were able to experience the thin place just by being with him. Just by being in his presence. I pray that this sanctuary, this spot of ground right here might be a thin one of our thin places for each of us. Where we can continue to open our hearts before God and before one another and experience the Spirit of God moving in real and powerful ways. If you think about it, worship certainly should be, and I don't like using the word should, but in this instance I will, should be a thin place in our life. A place where we experience the holy. There may not be a burning bush right here in front of us, but if we allow God to open our hearts, we can experience that place right here in a song or in a prayer, in the scripture reading, in a conversation before or after worship. Some of you may have experienced it while lighting your candle today. Of course, it's not the only thin place. But it is definitely a place of holy ground. Thanks be to God who still desires relationship with us and still speaks to us through those thin places in our lives. 
a thin place of holiness is available to us right here and right now in the sacred sacrament we call communion. Let us prepare by taking a moment to pray. Lord, as we prepare to partake of this holy sacrament, remembering your sacrifice, may we also experience your Holy Spirit moving amongst us. We lift this up in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I'm using a little different liturgy today um, for communion. It's particular to All Saints Day. And so it's not in your um, hymnal. However, the parts that you would speak will be up on the screen. And there'll be parts where I speak where after a while it will just say dot, dot, dot. And everything I say will not be up there. But just so that um, you know what to expect. So if we could go to that part. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David. God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of the mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. To the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, On the night that Jesus gave himself up for us, he sat with his disciples, and he took bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. And every time you do this, remember me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. And after he gave thanks to his Father in heaven, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And every time you do this, remember me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. And may they be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints. All of these that are represented before us today. And since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, 
looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes again in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
why we do this. Remember him. Take and drink. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of being able to worship you, of coming together and partaking of this holy sacrament that is well over 2,000 years old and yet so meaningful. And thank you for creating us with memory. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn, Hymn of Promise, 707, and it's also up on the screen, and those who are able, please rise. Thank mm -hmm. you.